Hello, my name is Austin Belzer, and welcome back to the Austin and Media Podcast. Before we get into the main show, I have to tell you how you can support my work. The way I find my work, whether it be a review of a movie I rented or paying for Zoom, my Patreon is the way you can help offset those costs. Patrons like Ambula Bula, Brian Scuttle, David Walters, Joseph Davis of Sip Pop, Matthew Simpson of Awesome Friday, Tom Blackburn, and more help make episodes like this possible. So thank you to all of my lovely patrons out there. Beyond financial support, you can get some pretty sweet perks. Whether you're into 40-hour early access to my reviews and this podcast, monthly surveys, giving direct feedback, commentaries, and just about everything in between, consider becoming a patron for as little as $1 a month at patreon.com slash austinbmedia. You can also save 16% if you decide to subscribe annually. On top of that, if you're not ready to subscribe, you can get a seven-day free trial on every tier I offer. With that said, let's get to the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, back to the Austin B Media Podcast. This is episode number 21. Yeah, it, most of those have been in the last, gosh, what, when was episode 12? Whenever El Conde came out, that's when I did episode number 12. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing multiple podcasts. Anyway, today I'm going to be discussing the Netflix original film, Fair Play, which premiered at Sundance 2023. With my guest Roberto Ortiz. Welcome to the podcast. Tell everyone about your work. Thank you for having me. I'm mostly active on Twitter, but I post my movie reviews mostly on Instagram. So yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Do you do the carousel stuff? Could you repeat that? Do you do the carousel stuff where you do like multiple photos and kind of swipe to do the full review? Sometimes it depends how long it is. Sometimes I just put in one caption, but if I go really in depth, which sometimes I do, then yeah, I do that. Nice, nice. Yeah. I have a, I have one one of my contributors for when he doesn't write for me, he'll do that like little carousel swipe thing. Oh, um, nice. Yeah, which I think is a pretty cool idea. I just, I'm just like, but it won't bring people to the website. But anyways, <laughs> so before we get into the main discussion. Is there anything you want to shout out, like a movie, show, an album? It's new release Friday. Anything oh, else? yeah. I'm seeing Killers of the Flower Moon tomorrow, but I'm seeing Anatomy of a Vault today, and I highly recommend people go see both of those films. Yeah. yeah I, I, I probably will see Killers of the Flower Moon. Yeah, but I don't know about you, your theater situation, but I have to travel like two hours to get like the good movies. I've brought this up before in the podcast, but... Um, living out in the middle of nowhere with only two theaters that are owned by the same person. It was a miracle I even got the Eras tour. So, wow. If it helps, I know our theater has Killers of the Flower Moon, but me and my dad have to travel like an hour just to see Anatomy of a Fall. So this better be worth yeah. the drive. <laughs> I'm fingers crossed for you because I sure. want to see that so bad. I know I talked about, we talked about it a little bit with Thomas Stoneham Judge on the TIFF podcast, go check that out, because he talked about how on the t- at the Toronto International Film Festival, they were doing, at the press screening, they were doing, like, double bills of Anatomy of a Fall and Zone of Interest together. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, so, crazy. And uh, by the way, the theater we're going to was sold out. We barely got tickets. Wow. I know, Yeah. Is it in any special format? No, it's our local Alamo Draft House. It... Oh, nice. I love yeah. Alamo Draft House. That's I know. Probably... But... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, what I was going to say is that if you want to go to a theater where people just love movies, go to an Alamo Draft House. They, you could tell the audience just loves it. And I've been there a few times. I went to see Banshees with my dad with a packed theater, and the th- theater was going crazy for that movie. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I... It's interesting because for Banshees, I saw that at a press screening. Check out my review on austinb.media. And then once it came out on digital, because I get Disney digital codes to review, I saw it with other people. And then it was like a completely different experience. It was interesting. Wow. Because it's so isolating doing a press screen because it's five or 10 closely knit people where you know each other because you've seen each other uh, at other press screenings. Um, So yeah, it was, I, and you know what? I think 
was that the day they did a double bill for that? I think it was. <laughs> they did a double bill of Banshees and Empire of Light. Oh, wow. That's an interesting double bill. Yeah, it, I think it was because award season was heating up and it was like, okay, we don't want, they're coming around. I think Empire of Light came out December 5th, 2022. And I feel like they didn't want people, I, I forget why, but it was super cool. <laughs> but, but yeah, I used to go to the Alamo Draft House. We had one in Kansas City, but it shut down during the pandemic because they couldn't get enough people to come. And now it's owned by some crappy theater company that owns all the Midwest theaters, not oh, AMC, BNB is who owns it now. And I hate their wow. aesthetic. That sucks. But yeah. But I do have <laughs> one here, and that's probably Halsey Killers of Flower Moon. Awesome. I'm super pumped for it. I'm seeing it with, I'm seeing it with my uh, whole family tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah. But with that said, by the way, I hope, hope you enjoy it. If you want to steal my strategy, don't feel pressed about getting up to pee during a, a three-hour movie. During Avatar 2, I was like, you know what? This is the boring part. I can leave. <laughs> no, no. I, I've actually never had that issue, getting up during a movie. Never had that issue. It must be old man disease. Yeah. <laughs> old, old man at 28. But <laughs> with that said, let's talk about fair play. Oh, yes. So... First question, it, it premiered at Sundance 2023, and I know Sundance had an online option, and this was one of them. Did you get the chance to see it then, or did you see it on Netflix later? I saw it on Netflix. I didn't even know Sundance had an online option until it was way too late when I wanted to see Magazine Dreams, and I was very mad. <laughs> at the time, not anymore, considering what happened, but I'm, I plan to go next year, but yeah, fair play, I heard a lot of buzz, and I was... Very interested after Oscar Expert reviewed it. I thought, oh, this looks really interesting, actually. So once I saw it on Netflix, th th there, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, for sure. I think I even said so in our DMs after I just finished watching it 30 minutes ago. I think so. Something like that. Because I like to be fresh when it's something new other than Mission Impossible because I'm not paying 20 bucks to go watch that again. Oh, or God, Barbie. No. Although... If somebody wants to lend me the 20 bucks, I'll <laughs> patreon.com slash Austin B Media. Yeah, come on. This guy might need to see Barbie. Jesus. Come on. <laughs> so jokes aside, I did not see it at Sundance either. The last time I went to Sundance, quote unquote, went was 2021, the year of CODA. Mm -hmm. And I paid my way there because I think, what what's the pass worth? 350 bucks? But I, oh okay. But here is the, cool deal sundance has this thing where if you're under a certain age like if you're i think if you're under 25 they have a discount at checkout where you can be like hey i'm under 25 give me that discount and i think it's 50 percent off so i think it was okay. 150 something like that yeah so that was a lot better and i got to watch 30 40 something like that movies well worth wow that's, that's a lot of movies look I, wow. I did nothing but watch Sundance movies that entire Sundance. Like, I just watched three or four movies a day. Good God. I'm going to AFI next week. Oh, uh, yeah. Congratulations for, for I did that um, 2020 and let's see, 2021. I didn't do last year because mm. I cannot afford the trip to LA. Um, and I can't do it this year for the same reason, but I, for those maybe on the fence, go to AFI Fest if you have the resources to. It's one of, yeah, the, it's one of the best film festivals out there. I, they, they took a chance on me when they were my firm first film festival I covered professionally. Really? Like first, yeah, first comp tickets and, First, first interview with Sean Glass of 84 period piece on in present day, which is on my YouTube channel, on the website, everywhere. So they took a big chance. And I attribute that to where I've come today, where, where I've, how the trajectory, you know? Yeah. Wow. Um, that, that's awesome, man. That's really cool. Yeah. So I really hope you enjoy it. I'll give you some tips 
afterwards because they were late to press related things. But but yeah, I, I really hope you enjoy it. What are you saying? By my schedule appearing, it's funny. The only reason why I'm going is to give me an excuse to go see my girlfriend. <laughs> we're long distance. And then I saw AFI. I'm like, I was like, oh shit, this gives me a reason to go out there now. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, now we're both going. Let me find my schedule. We're seeing a lot. I'm going to have to miss the first two days because of school, but okay. we're seeing Freud's last session, okay. the bike riders, perfect days, uh, me, captain, memory, all of us, strangers, American fiction, and maestro. That's a good list. That's a really great list. Yeah. Yeah. Especially the bike riders now, because mm-hmm. we've got just for those who haven't seen the news, it got pulled from the release schedule. Yeah. I, I feel so lucky that I get to see it because that's one of my most anticipated movies of the year. If I'm being 100% honest, it looks really good. Though what I'm most looking forward to is probably Freud's Last Session or Maestro is what I'm really excited about. Really? Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm just really interested to see what that what Freud's Last Session is going to be, how it's going to play. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Mine, I think if if I had to go, I'd definitely catch fingernails. Um, But then again, it comes out in a month. That's the balance. (laughs) Yeah, no, if I wasn't missing those first two days, I would 100% catch fingernails, but... Yeah, and before you catch fingernails, whenever you do, I, I don't know if I reviewed it, but his previous film, Apples, go see that first. I've heard of that. I uh, I think the only film I saw of his, he made a uh, Dog Teeth, right? The director. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah, I believe. Come at me in the comments if if that's not true. <laughs> yeah, please prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he. I think apples and fingernails would make a good double feature. All right. They're... Yeah, I will hundred percent will. We and again we talked about this on the Tiff podcast, but but yeah, I'm fully. I can't wait to check that out. Sam Ismail is going to be there. Uh, with his new film. I forget what it's called. It's a long title. Somebody t- tell me what it is in the comments or I'll just put it in the description. But I'm anything he's doing, I'm up for. Because he really hasn't done anything since Mr. Robot. And when did that end? 2016, 2017? Yeah, around that More time, around yeah. There? Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. But with that said, I hope I do hope you enjoy AFI Fest. Thank you. Yeah, but getting back to Fair Play, what were your expectations for this movie? And did it meet your expectations? So I did not have a lot of expectations. I only heard about it. I didn't really go deep into what it was about. I just knew it it, it started in, it was about a hedge fund and like a couple and then their relationship slowly decays. But I my expectation was that it, it, it would be good. And it definitely met that expectation. It was I was more surprised, if I'm being honest, by especially the ending. I was like, what the hell? I was more impressed. I was very impressed by it, especially after finding out that the director, this was her first time making a movie. That yeah. that was like, wow. It looks like, by the way it plays, you think she's been doing this for years. Yeah, I could definitely see a, a thing where maybe she directed a few TV episodes, and then made a movie. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's flawless. I don't get the com- comparisons to Marriage Story at all, but <laughs> what, what are you going to do? It's Twitter. There, there are comparisons to Marriage Story to this movie? That's... Okay. <laughs> I it's don't reductive. get it. <laughs> yeah, very weird. <laughs> yeah, and, and it was Netflix themselves saying it. Like Marriage Story can never, or something like that, and then put <laughs> the movie. Weird to duck on one of your own movies, but oh, all right. I, I know. But as for mine, I think they were relatively low as well. I think I was expecting a good time, as in the frame of an erotic thriller. I knew pretty much. I didn't know anything about the story uh, other than what the trailer told me. They're shorting stocks. They're dating, and that's. The premise, right? And then it's got Alden Ehrenreich and Phoebe Dinover. I didn't really have high expectations, but given the reception at Sundance, it heightened it a little bit. But yeah, I, I, 
it surprised the heck out of me. I'll use your words. It surprised the <laughs> heck out of me, especially since there's a version of this movie that I think could be done so cheesily and so poorly done where it could get into soap opera territory. <laughs> and I think it does straddle that line a little bit, but never really gets 100% there in terms of soap opera. It, it tries yeah. to at least have subtext and context to everything and not, oh, you're alive? Oh, you know, it doesn't <laughs> rely, rely on shock and awe. But yeah, and I think that would go for my initial impressions of the film too. And then I guess overall, I think, I think we agree on this. It just surprised us. I think oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's the long and short of it. It just, <laughs> with a directorial debut, there's a lot of things you can get into where, you know, maybe you don't know something until you know it, until you get into your second feature. But again, you talk about, it feels like she's been doing this for years. And I agree with that. I'm going to stop talking in circles. But with that said, let's get into the story. All what, right. What did you think of it? I thought it, I thought it was pretty original, if I'm being honest. And I, I really love this story. And what I think is really good is that they, is that she creates, the director, I forgot her name, but she creates these two characters that you really want to root for at first. On the surface level, you have this perfect relationship. They're like, I, I want these people to succeed. But as time goes on, you're like, Holy shit. And what I think it really succeeds at, succeeds at is that sometimes people fake like a lot of things just to keep a relationship going. Like mm -hmm. how Alden's character is so happy for her at first, but the jealousy builds up over time. And that was done really masterfully because Phoebe's character, she just does not know what's going on. And he makes her feel like she did something wrong when in reality, she just did her job. And yeah, and I think it almost tries to cast, I'm trying to get not get into spoilers here, try not. <laughs> I think it all also does a really good job of casting the dispersions on is, oh, what's her character name? Emily, whether yeah, Emily like is a reliable teller of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to dance around spoilers. Um, <laughs> but there it, are situations where we're in the mindset of Alden Ehrenreich's character, Luke Edmonds, um, where, well, what if she did do that? Because we didn't see what happened. She could have mm -hmm. done the thing that he's yeah. accusing her of, but we'll never know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is uh, purposeful. Yeah, for sure, especially with the ending. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I and for you asked the director. Her name's Chloe. Oh, I'm going to mess the pronunciation up so bad. Chloe Dumont. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Chloe Dumont. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, no problem. And I think from here, I, I want to drill down into the specifics of it. I guess this is where I want to get into potential spoiler territory before we get into that because I, I don't think we can talk about this film without spoiling major parts of it yeah so b before we get into that if you haven't watched the movie check out now come back watch it on netflix and then come back and then really quick what would you recommend this movie to others why or why not I 100% will because it really calls for a conversation. If I'm being, if we're being truthful with each, with each other, you, you watch the movie and you think this is what goes on in the workplace. This could really start a conversation. You see this woman and she works hard and yet the people beneath her just think she slept her way to the, to the top. And it's fucking disgusting. It really shines a light on how female workers are treated or viewed. Well, male workers who work hard and they get the promotion, everybody's happy for them. But when a female does it, it's like, she's a slut. <laughs> she probably fought the boss. This movie really can help start a conversation about the, all that. Yeah, and I think I'd recommend it for the same reason. Um, 
And I will say that I think it does a really good job of being a uh, psychological thriller rather than, and I think the movie miscategorizes itself. I don't think this is an erotic thriller at all. Mm -mm. Not even close. I mean, there's what, four or five, maybe a handful of sex scenes? They're pretty graphic. I could get I get that. <laughs> it does not hold back. My God. But it does not. Yeah, when I looked the movie up before I watched it and it said erotic thriller, I thought, okay, what the fuck? This should be interesting. And then when I watched it, I thought, I didn't get that. It's more like you said, it's more psychological, especially on Luke's part. That dude yeah. goes through a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, so I would recommend it. I give it I want to give it a rating, but at the same time, I don't. Because I think this is going to be a different movie depending on your life experience. Somebody might not like it because of the conversations it provokes. And some people might like it because of the conversation it provokes. Yeah, I, and for, the, for some, it might be potentially triggering at some points. Oh, um, oh yeah, because already what's in it. I could see yeah. so people want to turn it off because it does get a bit real and uh, a bit graphic at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Especially I'll just say I, I recommend it despite all that. Not despite all that. I recommend it because <laughs> it just tries to, instead of just say, here's a story, it tries to make you think about the story. Exactly. Exactly. Which is rare. People think that this is, and my people, the people who say there are no original movies, which is a criticism I 100% don't understand. I, 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 those same people just don't go out and watch those movies. We've literally been getting original stuff yearly, but they don't make any money because people don't go see them. That's why Hollywood promotes sequels and remakes more because they know that's what sells. Now, recently, I think now that original movies have been making a bit more money, for example, like Oppenheimer and everything everywhere, I think we're going to see more original movies as the time comes, hopefully. But yeah, literally, like last year, it was nothing but original <laughs> we, we saw. Yeah, the movie that won Best Picture at the Oscars was a wholly original movie. Yeah, really. <laughs> so I've disagreed with that sentiment for a while. It's just the reason why people say that is because they just see what's being promoted. But original movies are being made all the time. It's just go out and find it and watch it. As simple as that. Yeah, for sure. Especially yeah. watch the ones I tell you to watch. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. Come on, guys. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, three years. Come on. But jokes aside, I think now's the time to get into spoiler discussion. And I guess as a warning, we are going to be talking about things that are potentially triggering. So if I won't say what they are as to not spoil things, but if just maybe check out of this podcast, if you don't want to hear if you have any triggers relating to relationships. So, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. maybe put a, or maybe if you can put a timestamp to when that part ends to make it easier for yeah, people. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I will. Yeah. I need to get better at doing chapters on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. To help you out, we started at around, I think, 20 or 30 minutes. This okay. is where it's about to start. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. So let's get into it. I'm All right. going to talk about, we're going to talk about a lot of the themes. So it's just going to be a theme heavy discussion. So All put right. on your thinking caps, everybody. So there's, I told you this before we started recording, but there's a lot to talk about. So let's yeah. tackle the big one. Um, All right. The movie depicts gender roles and sexism in the workplace to a T. So I guess, what did you think of the portrayal and how Emily tried to do her own thing? It's, it's like I said earlier, I really think it was masterfully done and i really think it does shed a light on on how male workers view female workers who succeed better than them how for example as i said if a male worker gets a promotion people are like yeah he worked hard but if you see a female worker get a promotion that a male worker wanted they probably think oh she's probably slept with the boss or she slept her way to the top and 
it, it, it's just really crazy that, that kind of environment exists. And especially in the movie, it, it, they really do not hold back kind of environment. Oh. It really shows you that these men, they're, they're just terrible people. Now, and it's, and it, what's really interesting is that they talk about it so much that it starts to affect her boyfriend, Luke, that he yeah. slowly starts believing that rumor, even though... Oh, at least it prevents it presents itself that she didn't do anything, but the ending we don't know. But it, it it just sucks, honestly. That's the world we live in. Yeah. Yeah, and to comment on that last part, not the ending, but what that rumor, it it's like a through line. It's not just like a. It's it's interesting because in a relationship. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get all relationship talk right now. <laughs> there, jealousy is a really dangerous thing in a relationship, and I've experienced it before, where I've not had similar questions. Sometimes someone talks about somebody a lot, and then you're like, then you get that self doubt, and you're mm-hmm. like, maybe that thing I heard could be true. And exactly, then you, it's yeah, and no. I think that part was handled exceptionally well because, again, I, like I talked about earlier, we don't see what actually happens in this movie. Whenever you think something is going to happen, it's just cut. Exactly, I'm just gonna say this now. I do think Phoebe is Emily is innocent. I I truly think she. Interesting. Yeah, I, I do know the ending kind of presents it, so it like it leaves it up to interpretation, but I think she's innocent. But yeah, you're right. No, especially you know, and I'm gonna be honest. I have experienced jealousy even in my current one because my girlfriend she she's an actress, so you have those thoughts. Oh, what if she finds someone you know better? But and I've had those discussions with her. We talked it out, and that's how you get better at that. And me and her are in a good place, but. I do. It is scary, though, at times, especially when you hear it constantly, at least for his character, that he's, yeah. even though you don't believe it, but you're like, what if people are saying it? So, yeah, it's. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And and I think especially and I guess touching briefly on the ending, I'm of the opposite mind. I do not think really? she's innocent because and I guess jumping around a little bit here. The last thing you hear before it slams to credits is her laughing. Oh, shit. Oh, God. And she also lies to her boss about what happened. That is true. Going along the, yeah, going along the lines of an unreliable narrator, even though she really doesn't narrate the movie, but she is the main character. Man, now not you're making me question things. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> it is that kind of movie where I think if you watch it multiple times, you start thinking about things. And like I've said before, somebody count the amount of times I've mentioned Arrival on this podcast, but <laughs> but I overthink things a lot. Why, why do I mention Arrival? Glad you asked. Because when I saw Arrival in theaters, I figured out the twist to that movie five, ten minutes in, it ruined that story for me. And that's something I constantly do. I forget what the example was recently. There was like a recent movie with a huge twist that I'm like, oh, that makes sense. That, that yeah, I, I called Annihilation another one I called. So uh, a lot of A movies that I'm getting that I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so how does that apply to this movie? It, I was like, okay, we're not seeing what's actually happening and she never fully answers the question of did you uh from luke emily never answers the question of did you do the thing wait i thought, I thought she kept saying no i don't think did, she, she does to... holy fuck wait really what my voice cracked wait really she, I don't think she ever gives a straight answer. Again, feel free, watchers on YouTube or people on AustinB.media, hi, to 
comment if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she never answers the question completely. I think she just redirects it back at him of his jealousy and how he's jealous of her because she got the promotion and he didn't. Oh, fuck. I'm going to have to rewatch it then. <laughs> I could have sworn I thought I heard her say no multiple times. I, I think the only time she ever really says no in a really definitive way is to another question. I can't remember exactly the question, but I think it's something she denies something unrelated, completely unrelated. Wow. This changes a lot of things then. <laughs> You can always go rewatch it on Netflix. Uh, that's what I plan to do. It's it's a really good movie, so like I, I'd, I'd yeah. happy to re, uh, rewatch it regardless. But another thing, and I think this plays into uh, Luke's story, and why I think. How do I want to phrase this? I'll just I'll, I'll just not phrase it in a question. That's probably the best way. So. Luke starts, I don't know, attending some kind of seminar online. The book, like Mastering Your Money or something like that, I believe is the name of the book. And I don't know about you, but did you get hints that they were talking about, in an indirect way, Jordan Peterson, Andrew Tate, people like that? I think so. I think, yeah. Because if you notice his behavior afterwards, he gets really obsessive <laughs> and possessive. Yeah. He goes on like on a whole nother level. It goes from instead of speculation, he just straight up believes that she's just cheating or cheated. Yeah. And I think it plays into something that happens later in the film. And I guess we should talk about that. For instance, I don't want to talk about like the actual instance because it might be triggering, but at the party, a thing happens. Abuse. It, I don't know about me or about you, but that really didn't click for me until after, until she, until Emily calls Luke out on it in the apartment. To me, I thought it was like rough play or stuff like that, but apparently not. Apparently it was much more. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about the bathroom? Yeah, the bathroom. That's what I'll refer to it as, the bathroom, where physical abuse happens. Yeah, where, you know, at first, we're made to believe it was consensual, but then when she calls him out on it, we're like, wait, what the fuck? Okay, so you got that too. Yeah. I was like, okay, because I didn't catch that it wasn't until after, way after, until the ending. Yeah. I, I just thought, oh, okay, they're freaky. <laughs> That's what I thought at first. I mean, hate sex is a thing. It literally is. But yeah, I... It, it, and I think it connects to the book he was reading and just how he's been dri Luke has been driven about down this path of I deserve this. It's, I've worked for this. And uh, the begging scene where he's begging his boss to give him the new job where he's, he believes that he need he's, I, I guess to use a Taylor Swift man, uh, lyric, the man. <laughs> and that he, even, even though he lost, if you do the math, he has lost this firm $40 million because he loses 15 million, uh, at some time before this, and then he loses an additional 25, mm -hmm. which I don't know how he doesn't get fired, but whatever. But yeah, I think that arc is so masterfully done because I think it perfectly displays what jealousy can do to a person and what it can drive people to. It he becomes an entirely different person than what we see in the first half. He's this charming, likable guy who wants nothing but the best for his girlfriend, soon to be wife. But then once he feels like something was like taken away from him or he unfairly didn't get something, he just changes it to this monster that you don't even recognize him. 
and it's that was really done well and especially towards the end i think once he comes once he accepts something he go, he tries to go back to to like a normal person as if nothing happened and especially during the movie he manipulates her he ignores her and mm-hmm. it was like it was just really it's like how did, i it's so hard to watch at times you're like jesus christ you can't, you can't even be happy for her he just thinks she stole it from him and it creates a resentment yeah, and so the deep kind where it's, no, you don't get it, is one of his lines. It, and she's like, no, I do get it. Um, mm-hmm. And I think in that way, this movie is a two-hander. Um, in that this is equally Emily and Luke's story. Because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, um, anytime we cut from Emily, we're going straight back to Luke uh, and saying, okay, what's his journey? What's he going? What's he doing? Um, and the things he are doing, he's doing are not good. Yeah. And yeah. But what I, yeah, you know, uh, what I do, I, I have to say is that at the beginning, she is already happy at the first part of the movie for those who haven't seen it or for those watching it. That they they present itself that Luke is the one getting her promotion and Emily's she's just happy she's like, hell yeah I cannot wait for this and but yet when she gets the promotion he can't be happy for her or at least he says he is but he's not and that is also very interesting that it's just she could be happy for him but like when it's the other way around he's just he turns into this terrible person yeah and I think it ties back into the thing of he feels like he deserves it. That he's yeah. Does he say you have become my god? Yeah, no. He said I want. He used a lot of biblical references when he was like on the on his knees. He was like, he kept saying. I, he mentioned blood is like his wine or something to the boss. Yeah, like it was so weird. You used to, you literally cringe watching that scene. You're like, what is he doing? And then finding out that, that the position was already taken. Oh, oh God. I'll it tell you what, like, I'm not even in the finance industry or like office workspace anymore. But I know that feeling of looking to your left and seeing the person that has your got your job that you are gunning for. And it's just mm-hmm. a deeply soul wrenching feeling because you thought you had it. And then at the last second, it's gone. Yeah, uh, especially because he just took a very big chance of embarrassing himself. Very big. Yeah, yeah. no, you can't for, can't forget that. You just can't forget that. Everybody's going to remember you for that now. Really, yeah. Everyone saw it, and they're going to remember him for something else he does in the movie uh, later <laughs> on. Oh, um, yeah. And I think that actually is a perfect veering off point to talk about the company itself. It, it the movie says a lot about work life balance, the financial industry. That gosh, that it's just so insane, right? Oh yeah. One of the commission checks she gets is for five hundred seventy five thousand dollars, and I did I... the math. That would mean the closing, assuming it was one or two percent, or maybe even ten percent. That's five million or something like that closing cost oh jesus i i audibly gasped when i saw that wish how much she was getting i was like oh my fucking god that's a lot of money especially the situation they were in you saw their apartment they were not really they're not doing well and did you catch what i caught with that check what did you catch luke looking at it oh shit i think i think i did Oh, God. Jesus, it just... A because lot of it, I'm remembering home, now. Because she comes home drunk from one of the, her hangouts with her boss, and she, it, like, I don't know, empties out her purse or something, and then it, and he sees the check, and you can just see his eyes lock yes. on it. Yes. Like he's never seen that much money in his life. It, oh, my God. It, it just... It gets worse and worse for him. It just gets worse and worse. 
Oh, and, God. And I can't believe I'm about to defend something he, he did in this movie. I can't believe this uh, because of who he becomes later. But at this time, he was rational. At, at this point, he wasn't like off the deep end yet. He does say something that I think is rational because in his quest for finding out what is the truth of how did she get this job, he asked her not to take a 2 a.m. call because who calls you at 2 o'clock? 2 a.m. to just talk business. Realistically, if if somebody called me at 2 a.m., I would have questions too. Yeah, yeah I'd be like, what the fuck are you calling me for? Why aren't you in bed? <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, that was probably one of the only times where it did make sense. No, like at the beginning, you do agree with him a little because it happens all suddenly. You, of course, he'd be suspicious. And uh, yeah, but he does not help his case when he gets more and more off the deep end and uh, starts to just ruin their life. Yeah, and, and he does it to himself, really. He does. But if you think about it, Emily does try to save Luke at multiple points. She does. She even tries to get him a promotion that he... We, you notice he isn't really capable of handling. He's... At first, you're like, yeah, this guy's a good employee. He works hard. But when you find out how much stuff he's fucked up in the company... There's a reason why he didn't get the promotion. He's a terrible yeah. employee. There's a difference between hardworking and as a hardworking person, you can work your ass off and be terrible at the job. And that's what he is. He, I know he does work hard. You can tell he's trying, but he's just bad at it. He gets a lot of stuff wrong. And if they were to promote him, he would possibly lose them more than 40 million, if we're being honest. Yeah. A lot, lot more. Because, I mean... Um, and a specific instance where she tries to pull him out of his desperation is when he's buying that book. Uh, because did you notice what the price was? Wasn't it like nearly a hundred or something? No, it was more. Oh, oh. I don't remember the price, but I, I remember it wasn't it like a lot. Three thousand dollars. Fucking hell for a book. Yeah. And a seminar and stuff oh. like that. The stuff where people say, of course, but you also have to buy the book. And yeah, yeah. No, that, that bro got scammed. <laughs> it's just simple as that. <laughs> and, yeah. And she's trying to be like, hey, unintentionally, if you look at it in hindsight, if he had not gotten that book, I think he would have at least tried to better himself to try to make the peace with the thought of, okay. It, so her boss calls her at two o'clock. We live in a competitive industry. The financial industry has parties and some of them unsavory. And yeah, he would have been fine with it. But now that he has the book, I think he really just snaps. He, he, he does. Being told I do. things. Mm -hmm. And uh, remember, if you notice, remember, he even slightly insults her, too, when he read her chapter on how to dress for a workplace. He basically yeah. insults her parents and calls her, what, dressing like a cupcake or something? Like, yeah, like that, that's exact quote. Not exact like, quote, but he calls her He, he just, yeah. like, he, he feels like the book has all the answers, and if you follow everything about it, you're going to be successful no matter what, when in reality, sometimes books just don't have the answers. You just have to go based off instinct or... Clearly, it worked for her, and she didn't follow a book. She just did what she thought was right, and it worked out perfectly. Yeah. What does, oh, the big boss guy say? Because she writes a... What, go ahead. I have the movie up right now. I could find his name. He's played by... Ah, right, here we go. Found it. Campbell. Campbell, Campbell yeah. Played by Eddie, um, Eddie Morrison. Yeah. Yeah, Campbell brings up this, the what is it, Wall Street Journal or New York Times article she wrote at 17 mentioning how she not only escaped the box or something like that, she's running circles around it. Yeah. Jeez. I think... Which is... Go ahead. I think he was just mostly impressed with her than he was attracted to her. I just think he was just impressed because look at her, she... She clearly just does not give up and stuff. Yeah. So I, 
I guess I'll answer the question that is posed throughout the film, the what if scenario. I do think Campbell tried something. I it is possible he tried to do something. I don't think anything happened as well as I personally it is possible he tried something. And not that matters. Yeah. Not that matters in the slightest. I think even if she did do something, he remember he's a guy of a higher power. If she were to decline, her job is gone. Her he could destroy it. Though, but like I said, I, I still don't think he did anything. I just think he's a piece of shit. <laughs> he is a piece of shit in the movie. He's like an asshole. He Yeah. Remember, he even calls her a bitch when she messes up one time. Right? And then yeah, when she and- redeems it, he, like, he tries to forget it even happened. <laughs> yeah, and I don't condone of that use of that word ever, really. When, especially when for, referring to somebody else, I, yeah, I just have a thing about it. I don't think anyone deserves to be called that. No, um, no, especially the especially in the workplace. No, keep it out. <laughs> and I think that kind of plays into the power dynamics of this movie at play, not just between Emily and Luke, between Emily and Campbell, Emily and Paul, all the all the people she's with, because I don't think. He talks, Campbell talks about blame, cast it all aside. You're done with it, right? Let HR clean clean it up with a mop or something like that. <laughs> I do not think that there is not one person to blame in this whole thing. Because I know I talk about Luke being a, an issue a lot. You shouldn't have read that book. But you'll also notice Emily is being pressured to, oh, hang out with, with these people because you just got promoted, and oh, yeah. go to pumps, go to these places, which I still don't think that suggestion was entirely, like, they try and play it off, oh, pumps, you want to go there, but once you see the place, it, it was clear yeah. that's the place they wanted to go all along. Yeah, they, they got comfortable real quickly. <laughs> Very quickly. Um, yeah, yeah. And in the meantime, she's just trying to, at multiple times, she's trying to connect with Luke and say, hey, why don't we go out to dinner at this place? And really trying to do a lot for him. But those power dynamics are just, are too much for him to get past. Yeah. He, God, this movie just was so well ran. I, the, the characters are just so fleshed out, so opposite. It, it really is really impressive how much this film really had an impact at least on the both of us we've been talking about this film for an hour it doesn't even feel like that long <laughs> like oh really? time is going by it's, it's been an hour yeah <laughs> wow but yeah i i'll always say this if i haven't said it enough which kind of sounds like an oxymoron but whatever if i haven't said this <laughs> enough i always believe that a director should also write the screenplay at least have a hand in it because once you have at least a an idea for where you want the plot to go from a very basic stage, you can direct the heck out of that. Um, yeah, because since you wrote it, you know what to do with it. You know exactly, you picture in your mind as you're writing it. So it's just easier. Yeah. And then I guess briefly exiting the spoiler discussion, briefly, I do want to talk about Alden Ehrenreich and Phoebe Denever. Yes, please. I don't know. Yes, I don't know if you've done the research, but for those who haven't, for those wondering where you've seen Phoebe, she was on Bridgerton, but obviously more before that. And then obviously Alden Ehrenreich, you saw him in Solo, but this year, these two people are trying to do something very different for their career. Alden Ehrenreich specifically, because Alden Ehrenreich has. Go ahead. He, yeah, wasn't he an Oppenheimer? Yeah, he was an Oppenheimer. He did his directorial debut with Shadow Brother Sunday at Tribeca, which mm-hmm. was a short, I believe. And then he's in this. So I really he's feel... Having, yeah. He's having, a, he's having a good year, my dude. He's having a really good year. And I would argue he's the best part of Oppenheimer, besides Oppenheimer himself. Yeah, I was going to say... Uh... 
but yeah, I I think these two are really trying to find a way to say, I'm not just for Phoebe, to say. I'm not just that girl from Bridgerton or that woman from Bridgerton. I'm not just that guy. I'm not Han Solo. Although I will say, if I can use my platform for a second, I love Solo. I don't know why people dog on Solo a, a ton. Alden Ehrenreich and Lando are the... Uh, not Lando. Uh, Don uh-huh. Glover are the best parts of it. And maybe the plot wasn't like entirely there but that's what happens when you fire the director in the middle of shooting a film so maybe lucasfilm don't wow. do that um did not, know, did not know that wow yeah it was originally going to be directed by phil lord and christopher miller of spider-man into the spider-verse right and obviously lego mo- the lego movie but yeah these two are really trying to diversify i i hate this term but diversify their portfolio <laughs> and really just try and differentiate themselves to say, hey, I can do other things, not be typecast as just this yeah. one kind of person. Because if you look at their sheet, their filmographies, including TV shows, they really haven't been up too much since their last major projects. Solo, Alden Ehrenreich, rather, he really hasn't done a whole lot since Solo other than Oppenheimer. Book, booked a few gigs, but nothing like huge like Oppenheimer or Fair Play. And yes, I will assert that Fair Play is a major movie for him. And for Phoebe, Phoebe Denever, I think not being seen as the Bridgerton girl is going to help her career a a bunch. This this was one of the best things I've ever seen her in. I think this is her best performance ever. She kills it. I would be so happy if she ends up with an Oscar nomination at the end. If I'm being honest, is she Ooh, for this? 100% deserves it. Ooh. I think so. I don't think it's pop. I'm not going to predict it. I'm not even going to put her in the 10, but I would be a happy man if she gets in. But I uh, think at least, for, at least for me. I think if we're going to talk about Oscar uh, awards prospects, I think she definitely gets in at the Spirit Awards. Probably. I, I think screenplay is its best bet if we're going to talk. If we're talking about Oscars, I think screenplay is its best bet. I, I can yeah. see it. You know, being a passion pick. Yeah, because of because with Zone of Interest and Priscilla and all these big movies coming out, I I think somebody else is going to steal it from her. But I do think she should be nominated for something. Phoebe and Alvin mm-hmm. should be nominated for something this year, even if it's this Indie Spirit Award. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I just I would like to see her get her and Alden get recognized because they. Each of them, respectfully, they just, they kill it in the movie. Do more than what they were asked for, I bet. They just kill it. And, and their chemistry is really insane. You really do believe the relationship. They are phenomenal in this. Like, one of the best acting we've really seen, at least for me. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a little bit better this year. A little bit. <laughs> because I do think there are parts of Phoebe's acting that leans towards melodrama at points. I mean, I'm just going to call it out. I don't shout acting. I don't like it at all. Because I, I understand the need for shout acting. Especially when you're like in a relationship and you're, the two people are having an argument. But I, sometimes it doesn't just feel real. At points. Yeah, I get that. If we're going to bring... if Since Netflix brought a uh, marriage story into the conversation, I think that's a much more realistic depiction because of an argument because it's the silent little knife to the heart that that gets you in an argument it's not the shouting at shouting match although i'm sure that does happen for some people yeah i couldn't relate couldn't be me but jokes aside I, yeah i think they do really well and then let's just tuck back into spoiler discussion oh right. yeah just like tuck right back in yeah, I guess I say that and then I, my mind goes blank. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a very well thought out movie that really tries to see both sides of the argument, from, but also try to say, oh, here's the aspersions one cast if needed. And here's conversations you can have 
in your daily life, especially in terms of, I think, not just power dynamics, I think work-life relationships uh, or work-life balance, that, that's what it's called, where maybe you don't answer the phone at 2 a.m. You just don't answer the phone past like 9 o'clock. Once you're off, that's my rule, unless it's email. Yeah. I'm bad yeah. about email. But yeah, what else do we have to talk about? Unless you want to talk about the ending, I don't know. Yeah, let's just go right into it. Um, okay, give me your thoughts. Yeah, I briefly did, but I, I think this is where I, I started thinking about uh, retrospectively about the whole movie, um, where I said, okay, is she a reliable narrator? Is she reliable? It is could Luke be justified in his in his concern for how, like why is she going out getting drunk why is she answering call I don't know why I'm keying on at the 2 a.m thing maybe it just struck a chord but but yeah I think it really starts to have the viewer question everything they've seen up until then yeah especially with the laugh that's what gets me is the little split second <laughs> laugh. Yeah, I may maybe she was just putting on a mask all along, and that true. Maybe she did do all that stuff that he was or accusing her of. And I do like that it's left up to interpretation. It's not just spoon feeding you. It really wants you to think. And, and while he, Luke is not justified in a lot of the stuff he does, whether she did or not, <laughs> dude goes crazy. He. <laughs> He goes actually crazy, but yeah, she, like I said, uh, like you said, she even lies to the boss to cover her own tracks because she does not want to take accountability for mistakes she's even made. It is possible. And I do like that you are having this discussion on what the ending really means now. As I've said before, I truly think she didn't do anything, but it is left up. Maybe she did. It's possible. And I guess thinking back on it, I think aspersions are cast even earlier. Not earlier, but really you get hints of it strongly being the case when Luke tells her about the CVS deal or something like that, where if we do this, then we'll make a bunch of money, but yet she gets the commission, doesn't tell Luke about it, doesn't give him credit for finding it, and just kind of... She goes to pumps and he stays home drinking. Mm. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, and I think that's why... He... Go ahead. I was going to say, literally nobody's perfect. Nobody's an angel in this. You... No. The thing I love most about this movie is that nobody is perfect. You cannot... It's hard to side with a lot of them. It's easy to side with her because mostly you follow her, but she does a lot of bad things and he does worse things, but... What, every other character, they're, they're bad. The male co-workers, even her bosses, they're all bad people. And I think it's credit that you, you could see the ending two ways. Because let's not be fooled here. Doesn't tell his parents that they got engaged. That's, I'm waving the non-existent <laughs> red flag, but that's a huge, if you get engaged, you tell people, even if it's okay. Let me tell you a story about a relationship oh. I was in. Okay, it's <laughs> it, it, it's been a few years, so I'll just say I had an office relationship. So I know what it feels like to, obviously, not in the same way, not in the same way that this happens, where I, I like this woman. Asked her out. We started dating. Other things happened that I won't go into. And uh, let's see, where do I want to go with this? Because I want to tread lightly. Yeah. Like, I I get the what if everyone finds out. The, oh, what if. I get that. Understandably. But it, presumably, if I had, and I'm dodging around some personal details that I'm sure she wouldn't want revealed, that if we had gotten engaged, probably wouldn't have never happened. What if, if we're in the what if section, I probably would have tell, told people immediately, like within five seconds. 
even if it got me in trouble at work. Because at that point, is work more important to me than a relationship? Yeah, and I think that's yeah. the, the big crux for me. And I think to his credit, to the script and thinking who it, who's to blame. I think that's the ultimate question it asks in its ending is who's to blame. Even though it tells you not to, it, <laughs> it indirectly asks you who is to blame here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I 100% wow. understand it. Yeah, if just me, I'd probably tell people before I got engaged that I was going to pop the question. It, it, maybe that is a good point. I, I genuinely forgot he didn't tell his parents. Yeah, didn't her mo- Emily's mom tell his parents for yeah. him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and Jesus Christ. He, yeah, and that's when he disappeared for five days or something like that. Or a few oh, yeah, days, like, I don't Yeah, and he just, and then when he comes back, he acts like nothing happened. Yeah. It's he has issues. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he does. He <laughs> let's I guess let's talk about the big scene. Well, not the big scene. When he returns to office and he just looks like crap. Like he's been sleeping on a park bench. Yeah. And I don't want to say I felt for him, but I did feel for him in that moment. I'm like, oh man. Yeah, this is not a good look, but you realize you've got to get the work done and you need the job. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it what ensues is bananas, to say the least. Oh, oh yeah. And he does technically land back on his feet towards the end. Remember, he gets like a job, but with his brother's firm out okay. of state. Yeah. So let's talk about that going back to the ending. I have a theory. I want to see if you think this theory is correct. So my theory is she laughs because she's about to stab him. Again. Because (laughs) I think this is my rationale from what I know about Emily from the limited time we see her in this movie. From when that switch flips. Is that she is willing to do a lot to keep her job even willing to like say because somebody asks at one point or somebody says i know the way you look at him uh, yeah they're, they're like they're like if you sleep with him like i wouldn't we wouldn't care because oh, people in the office i think it's implied that they already kind of know because they that they talk to each other openly she goes to his desk in front of people yeah and my theory is she is willing to kill him for to make sure he doesn't tell the other side of the story to see to make sure that her version of the story is the only version of the story uh yeah yeah, granted i don't know what the benefits of him telling his side of the story would be but it would (laughs) at least be a little bit better than um stalking uh the r word and all the other things that happen that he did remember he did try happen Yes. After what I like, okay, the film doesn't really show us that's what it was. We only find out that's what actually happened until like towards the end. But yeah. you are right. He doesn't have a problem telling people. He did try, but she, she barely was able to save it. But yeah, he just screams, she's been fucking me this entire time. Okay, bye. And then he storms off. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think what happens after this ending? Oh, gosh. Obviously, I don't think she murdered him, but I do think that, I don't know, I would hope he doesn't win at the end. I hope he doesn't really go anywhere, but I just think she's, she keeps it going. She she won. He's, there, there's no way he could come out on top in the end. No way. Yeah, she gets him to cry. Yeah, no, she... He thought, you could tell, by the way, when he's in her apartment, he thinks he won. He found a job. He's going to be moving away. He doesn't have to look at her ever again. But what I think is that she wanted to leave her mark on him. Because what she makes him do, she makes him beg and cry. You can't fucking forget that kind of thing. That's unforgettable. What I truly think is that she wanted to leave a mark. She didn't want him to go without any consequences. She she made sure he was going to remember. I would remember that. Yeah, that's... (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> but I guess that ties into why I think she killed him. Because I, I don't think she... And this is maybe me going way too far with the idea of what she would do to win. Because even though I think she thinks she won, there's that. Th- I think there's that thing in the back of her mind where she he still gets to go to San Francisco. He gets off <laughs> and he still gets to do his own firm. No. Mm-hmm. So I, I, that's it, why I think. You know, it, it is truly unfortunate because that does happen sometimes where someone like somebody abusive could just win at the end. They could just leave and just forget it even happened and go on with their lives. What I think the movie was trying to do was to make sure that that guy just did not leave scot free. He was going to, she was going to leave a mark on him. She was going to make sure that you're never going to forget me. Hell, she could haunt him. That kind of thing could just haunt you for the rest of your life, man. He's going to have a scar here on his hand. Mm -hmm. and. Oh, yeah, because she does, like, literally slash at him a few times. Yeah, he yeah. goes for the knife, and then she slashes his hand. I think it's like a little nick, because I think he's trying to pull it, and uh, mm-hmm. but the shoulder gash. Anyways, semantics. Yeah. But, yeah, I definitely think this is a film that encourages you to think both before, during, and after and I kind of wonder, and I wish I wa- had watched this like earlier in the week <laughs> to see if it would have the same effect like days later. But I wonder if I'll keep thinking about this over the next few days. I couldn't get it out of my head after I watched it for a bit. Though, oddly enough, I really didn't think about the ending. I really thought it was just simple that she left her mark. But I just... God... You do make me wonder, maybe she actually did murder him. It is. That would be an interesting. That would be really interesting, actually. <laughs> yeah, because you talked about there's c- cases where in abuse situations, the person gets off, gets scot free. And I think just because of that, you also see a lot of situations where the snap happens, where it's no, he can't. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to make sure by killing him. Yeah, she even says herself that he he's just trying to act like nothing happened. That after what he did to her, it wasn't that bad. At least to him, in his mind, he's like, she could forgive me. She could just forget about it. But what he did to her, he manipulated her. He he ghosted her. He he just made her feel like shit pretty much every day, not being open with her. And and I truly think if they just had a conversation about it, none of what happened would have happened. Yeah, I think if I think there's a version of this where let's just think back on it. I think if initially when he was like having those doubts, because after my own uh, in in one of my relationships, I had to have the talk of should I be jealous? And I just had an open communication with her of, hey, do I need to like worry about this? (laughs) And then after we had the talk, I was good. I, it, no more. Yeah, yeah. I've had those exact same conversations with my current girlfriend multiple times, multiple times, and and it really does help because it helps ease your nerves if you like having, especially me, especially I'm dating an upcoming actress. You get a lot of worry because it's a very competitive industry, and you just and you've seen the rumors in Hollywood. You know what happens, but it's good that you have somebody who is willing to communicate who is willing to be honest with you. And I think that's the most important part of relationships in general is just communicate, be open with your feelings. That's, even if it's uncomfortable, it does help. Oh, we broke up later, but not because of that. Okay, never. <laughs> damn, goddamn. I, sorry, I did not want to give the <laughs> impression. No, that's long over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think that kind of brings us to, I, I think jealousy is as easy to resolve as just having that conversation of just being yeah. open and honest with each other so yeah I, I i totally agree if you have that conversation both these things probably wouldn't have happened right exactly or maybe yeah, it would so, have if he, unless that guy was truly crazy do you think i might ask you this do you think that was the real him do you think that this whole time he was putting on a mask until the until she 
got the promotion over him and then the mask slipped? There's a version, I think, that could lean itself to that, but no, I think he was genuinely happy for her until I think it's I think it was really that book that really just put that mm -hmm. what if seed. And again, I know we've talked about this a lot, but that what if seed is a dangerous seed to place into somebody's mind because Oh yeah. What if questions there was an entire Marvel Disney Plus show on the concept of a what if um mm -hmm. because it is literally the question is endless if, if it wasn't did she sleep with her boss it was to get the promotion it would be something else yeah yeah so yeah i i think i do not think that was a mask i or sorry i, I think he was being genuine the whole time in, until mm. he read that book and i think that "Quote unquote," radicalized them, yeah, uh, to, into using "what if" as his excuse rather than his the cause. Yeah, because I would say it would be a mask if that actually happened. If he knew without a shadow of a doubt that it happened. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. But but otherwise, his accusations are. Faceless. They they literally um, are. It's just a rumor that people started because she got, she was just successful, and I guess to cope with that, they're like, oh, she's just a whore. <laughs> Simple as that. And I mean, I don't think he should be taking the advice of people who are literally relay a story about incest. Yeah, it's so, it's just unfortunate. It's just <laughs> it's very unfortunate. <laughs> yes, I don't think it was a mask. It's it's just seeds were planted in him. Mm -hmm. that really just set him on this path, however dangerous. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think, gosh, I don't think we have, I think we've covered just about everything. I At least I'd hope so. Yeah. This, wow, time flew by, man. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, I love this movie. And mm -hmm. I think I'll wait on rating it on Letterboxd because I think, I, I, I think if my if it's a four or five star will depend on whether I still think about it in day in a few. All right. So I guess with that said, thanks for listening to the Austin B Media podcast. I have been your host, Austin Belzer. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast app. You can follow me on social media at Austin B Media on Blue Sky, Facebook. Instagram, Mastodon, Pebble, and Threads on the platform formerly known as Twitter, aka X. You can follow me at Austin B Media underscore. But if you fancy Letterbox, I'm on there as Austin B Movies. And where can people follow you on social media, Roberto? My same username is the Club Ortiz on Twitter and Instagram and Letterbox. It's where I'm mostly active. So yeah. Awesome. Have a great day. Until next time.